Okay, this uh, Revit tutorial is going to be on adaptive components, which was a uh, it was a new feature in 2011, and um, it's changed a little bit since then, uh, carrying over to 2012. Um, so let's get started. We're going to open up a conceptual mass. Now, the way the adaptive component works is that it's based on some sort of skeleton structure. Um, and it's a uh, it's almost like a secondary structure for which you can um, create a form. So um, I'm gonna press copy here and uh, copy some of these reference planes, and uh, we're gonna be drawing on those in a second. Okay, so this is gonna be the primary skeleton right here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and draw some splines on these going to draw four splines and it's going to be for um, times and uh, convenience sake I'm just going to do a tower for this one <coughs> okay so let's go down here and select this reference plane in order to draw in this plane here we have to select that reference plane otherwise um, you could be drawing uh, on the horizontal plane or in the other um, Y or Z direction. Uh, let's hold shift here and uh, we can toggle around this uh, holding the right um, mouse clicker. And we're going to draw two more splines here. Now, in a second here, I'll show you why this is so important, um, because other programs like uh, Rhino wouldn't be able to handle this sort of geometry. Um, so, let's just fix these. And then um, I'll show you. <coughs> okay, so basically what I want to do is I want to create a form from this. And um, what most people would think is, oh, we'll just loft these. But we come down here, and is it going to make a tower? No, it's some sort of crazy geometry. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an adaptive component, which is going to make a secondary structure. And from that, we can base our geometry on those guidelines. So um, <coughs> in 2011, you would come down to... Um, conceptual mass and it would be in here uh, adaptive component however we're in 2012 uh, Revit and so we're gonna go ahead and make a new it's actually in the family now and the reason why it's in the family is because um, you can now apply adaptive uh, components to projects it's not simply for massing now so now we're gonna make an adaptive component so again, this is much like the conceptual mass interface. We're going to go ahead and make four points here. And these four points are corresponding to the, um, the four spines that I already, the splines that I drew in the other, um, in the other family. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these. And when I select them, make adaptive comes up here. And I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you'll see a number pops up above each of these. So what the number tells me is that these are going to pop up in the order that I click them, and that I place them in the new family. So um, I'm going to go ahead and draw some model lines in here and make sure that you click 3D snapping and that this highlights the point. Okay. So now, <coughs> we're going to go ahead and load this into the project. Right now, it's not important um, the order that, uh, that I drew those points. However, when you start to get into more complex geometries, 
you're going to want to remember what the order that you uh, that you made the points in so that um, say you have a, um, a smaller end of a branch or something um, that's sticking out of another branch you don't want it to be too large so I'm going to go ahead I'm going to show you that in a later tutorial but we're going to just focus on this now and uh, th what I'm doing right now with the uh, adaptive components is I'm making a form um, so it's using components to make a form rather than um, using a form and then placing components on it um, which is what people normally think of when they hear components is something that's smaller um, but this is actually making the bigger the the scale the, um, the skeleton framework for our project so I'm gonna go ahead and I just place those points um, let me go back here <coughs> so that's loaded into the project this happens sometimes when um, when you go to place it in and then it, you lose the family somewhere so you're gonna come down here to families and come to gen generic models family 5 and we're going to create an instance and that's going to bring it back up here so again this is remember how they were all numbered in the other window okay well this is point number one that we're placing here and then point number two and so on so as you can see as I'm try as I'm drawing the geometry uh, Revit is sort of guessing where the next point's going to go but I'm going to go ahead and place these next couple points and that would be our first our base um, for this tower um, now I'm going to copy this up and as I copy you'll see that it starts to form to the framework so it's still attached to these uh, splines and as we begin to move farther and farther up it's adapting <coughs> so and there you can see the points uh, one two three and four so we're gonna keep on copying these up I'm holding control and dragging okay and now what we couldn't do before we can now do by selecting all of these and lofting them okay so we're getting an error message here self intersecting so I think this top one needs to be deleted but <coughs> hopefully that should solve it let's go ahead and select these again and create form now you can see <coughs> that this uh, geometry is now formed and this is a very flexible model so if say you uh, you need to go back and edit something rather than rebuilding the whole thing maybe you just need to change it slightly well you can drag the original splines and the whole entire form will uh, change shape so this is a very flexible model and very useful if you need to go back and edit something and that's part one of this series